The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to the Grey Cup for the fourth straight year. Woo! Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. It happens again. The Bombers defeat the BC Lions for the second consecutive year in the Western Final, in the West Final in Winnipeg. The Bombers giving up only three points after halftime. There is so much to talk about with this game. Uh, firstly, if you're a neutral fan who was not cheering for any uh, team in the playoffs, um, this was probably actually the more boring game of the two games. Um, and, but I digress. This was, this was a lot. Uh, th there, was a, there was so much going on. Um, and before I even get to the game, we, we got to talk about some stuff beforehand. So first off, Dalton Schoen is out. So number one receiver. Uh, arguably, you could argue that Dembski is number one, but Schoen is kind of being kind of being the man a little bit this past bit. Schoen's out. Schoen's not going to be in this game. And I was watching the Toronto Argonauts collapse oh, oh, to the Montreal Alouettes before this game. I was loving it. I have never seen a team like it was. Totally reminding me of the Boston Bruins, like setting the NHL record for like most points and then just completely flubbing it in the first round. That's what this was. Uh, Chad Kelly was awful, was awful. Oh my goodness. He was, he was a mess. He just could not stop throwing picks. We left uh, for IG field partway through the third quarter. Um, and uh, I actually watched the rest of the game on a VPN because uh, I, you have to, because in CF, to use CFL Plus, you have to be outside of Canada. So I set like my VPN to like London, England. And so I watched the rest of it in the car the way there. And they could not stop throwing picks. He, I think he threw four picks that game, only one touchdown. Um, and um, and there was a kickoff return touchdown for the outlets. Like Cody Fajardo didn't need to do shit. <laughs> um, the, the, the Argos were just, just destroying themselves. And, and that's what happened. So the, the Montreal Alouettes make it out of the East. But we'll talk about who makes it out of the West. However, one thing for the game. Um, the Bombers really increased the pyro budget for tonight. Yeah, they uh, got the Cody Rhodes treatment. Yeah, all the pyro was for the West final. Uh, so yeah, check out the Bombers entrance. A lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff there. And so it was, it, you know, it was, a, it was a little, it was a chilly day in Winnipeg. If we're including the wind chill, probably around minus eight, uh, including wind chill, uh, uh, not including wind chill. I think it's only about minus two, but there was a decent amount of wind there. Actually, uh, it was a big problem with all the pyro, all the smoke was getting like blown on the field and whatnot because you're using so much of it, but it was fun. Uh, so the Lions would choose to take, uh, would win the toss. And they choose to, take the, uh, choose to take the ball now. And before I get into it, another thing that is important to, uh, to remember is that this is Remembrance Day. There was a Remembrance Day ceremony. It was very, very beautiful. And so, you know, lest we respect all those who serve in our armed forces, tons of respect, um, especially to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. So just really, really important thing uh, to mention. Um, Remembrance Day, extremely, extremely important day. And uh, nothing but respect to those in the armed forces. But going into this game, uh, for the first quarter, uh, there would be a good stop on uh, on kickoff. Uh, bombers to take pass interference would be first down for the Lions. So, you know, let's try to not make this a theme here. However, Adam Big Hill would get the first of many sacks in this game for the Bombers. Oh, he's got nowhere to go! Adam Big Hill gets a sack, and it is loud. Like, I mean, it was loud at IG Field. And there was this hilarious thing um, that the Bombers had put up uh, on the board, and it said that BC has requested silence. 
uh, for tonight's uh, for tonight's game when they're on offense, respond accordingly. Uh, that was hilarious. Lo- <laughs> absolutely love that. So uh, good job, Bombers. That that was a good one. Uh, and, th- and right on cue, BC takes their first time count violation from the noise. It is a loud crowd, like I'm saying. That is time count violation number 140 ever since the Bombers started playing at IG Field. Uh, BC would go down a, a little bit further, though, and they would get themselves a 49 field, uh, 49 field, yard field goal. Barely makes it, but he does. So 3 nothing for the BC Lions. Uh, I believe this would be the only time they would be leading in this game, but early lead for the Lions there. And then this is where the Brady Oliveira show starts as my notes here are actually quite into something. So I have great run by Oliveira. Another one, another one. And now he catches two. Brady Oliveira is a guard. This whole first force drive, Brady Oliveira is the only one. It's literally just him. He rushes. And then the only pass that they complete is to Brady Oliveira. The BC Lions... First drive, they lost to Brady Oliveira and Brady Oliveira alone. And that was the thing. I'm not going to lie. When I'm in the crowd, I'm like, oh, this is like a statement. Like, this is a statement that the Bombers are making. Is that not only are you not good enough to beat us, you're not good enough to beat Brady. And it's like, wow. And he would top this off with a touchdown. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Convert is good. Seven three bombers. Uh, the lion. The lions would then start to push, but they're forced to punt. Bombers push back, and this is when Brady just really starts kicking into gear. He keeps going. He is just fucking unstoppable. Fantastic, fantastic start for Brady Oliveira. And I was saying, if the BC Lions want any chance of winning this game, they got to stop Brady, and they were struggling. We go into the second quarter there. Brady now is over 100 yards, uh, all-purpose yards, and just the start of the second quarter, just phenomenal. Uh, Zach Calera's would get stacked. So, you know, BC... The thing about BC that they struggled with here is that BC's defense, which has been an excellent defense this year, is very, very fast. They're not very big, though. That's the thing. Matthew Betts uh, was not able to record a sack tonight, and that's the thing. He's going against arguably the best two offensive uh, tackles in the league in Stanley Bryant and Jamarcus Hardrick. Jamarcus Hardrick is most likely going to win uh, Offensive Lineman of the Year. Um, and Stanley Bryant has won that award uh, at least four times before. Like, you're talking about an ungodly level of offensive tackles uh, in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and so Matthew Betts was kept at bay this entire game, um, and yeah, they weren't just weren't able to get anything going, but yeah, Claris would get sacked. Uh, there would be a long field goal attempt uh, by Sergio Castillo, and he would miss and get a single. It'd be four, uh, eight to three, sorry, for Winnipeg. Castillo had an okay game. Um, He, yeah, so this was one, it was a long field goal, so I sort of get it. There was one where he was just nowhere near it. It just looked like he hit it wrong, you know, maybe a little bit of pressure. There's one that I think he should have had, um, but it seemed like eventually he kind of calmed down, but he was a little on edge near the start, so I hope that is solved uh, come Grey Cup. Hopefully this is kind of get the nerves out now, be ready for a Grey Cup. Um, but it is what it is. And Jackson Jeffcoat would get his first sack of the game. Ball comes back. Nick Hallett blocks the punt and carries it in for a touchdown. Uh, 
Uh, I could be wrong here. I don't think a block punt uh, touchdown has happened all year, like off of a block punt. I think there's been a block punt, but return for a touchdown. I don't remember that. I could be wrong. Uh, but just phenomenal play by Nick Halla. And also, uh, big credit as well. When Nick Halla gets this ball, he's going in the end zone. It's funny. He starts going down, and he's not yet at the end zone. So the Bombers actually, like, they, like, grab at his legs and lift him up. So that way he's, like, he's not down. Then they're going to keep pushing him along. And uh, there was a few times the Bombers did this. They're, when when they needed to get that extra yard, they're, the guys that were getting behind and pushing were doing a fantastic job at that tonight. Uh, the offensive line uh, did a wonderful job at that on Brady Oliveira's first touchdown. Uh, Oliveira was just near the line. He needed that push. And it's big Stanley Bryant and Jamarcus Hardrick got back there and they made sure that happened. So excellent, excellent play. The convert is good. 15-3 to Winnipeg. So good job by the Bombers. Uh, Lions would go back on offense, but it wouldn't last long as there would be an interception. Interception for the Bombers, and then we'd go back a little bit. Castillo would hit a 29-yard field goal and make this game 18-3. to um, And then BC would get going for a bit. Uh, they'd go to third down. I believe it was third and five, and they would actually pull off a successful fake punt against the Bombers. They're going, they're going. They're faking it. I kind of felt like they were faking it. It was weird. They had received. Lions uh, faked the punts. They would get back on offense. They start pushing it down again. However, Malik Clements would get his first sack of the night. Oh, you got close. Stay on him! Again, Sack City for the Bombers. Clements gets his first of the night. Uh, then the Bombers would follow it up by a time count violation. Bombers took more time count violations today than BC did. I'm um, not going to lie uh, with how loud the crowd was uh, when BC was on the field. Uh, no excuse for that, boys. Better have that figured out by next week. And it is the end of the second. Oh, but wait a minute. No, BC's just, they just got a little bit longer. You know, they'll probably go down, maybe get a field goal if they get lucky or... Um, or maybe a touchdown off of a Hail Mary. Guys, guys, swat it down. Don't swat it up. Don't, it's not volleyball. Like, you know what? It was it was a shot in the dark. I don't, I don't I do not blame BC for going for that, but like I don't know, you just you hate to give that up with like one second left. Is what it is though. Convert is good. 18 to 10 for the Bombers going into halftime. So going into halftime, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. I'm I'm glad we're ahead. Had a strong start. However, I'm starting to get worried because the Bombers the majority of what they had produced uh, was a result of their was not was was not of their um, of their offense. It was actually of their defense. You know, being able to pull those interceptions in, being able to uh, block that punt. You know, being able to get some good points, but majority generated from some sort of turnover um, from the from the defense, and then obviously special teams being able to block the punt return for a touchdown. So, I was really hoping that we can get the offense going uh, going into the second half. Third quarter starts. BC would go and get themselves a good return. However, that would soon get stopped on the next play as Jackson Jeffcoat gets his second of the night. Get to him! Jackson Jeffcoat gets a sack. He looks over at Willie, asks if he wanted one, and Willie got himself a sack as well. Come on, come on, come on! Got him again! Got him! Got him! Oh, yes! That's still attacking! Woo! 
both defensive ends of the Bombers just on all cylinders tonight, especially Jackson Jeffco. My goodness, there was questions of if he was going to play tonight uh, based off his status. He played, and oh boy, did he play. Jackson Jeffco, phenomenal, phenomenal night. Um, both Willie Jefferson and Jackson Jeffcoat uh, were better than Matthew Betts tonight. Just Matthew Betts just couldn't get it going. Um, Willie Jefferson, he would get uh, only this one sack, but he, he would knock that ball down. Uh, he would get at least two tips uh, by getting, you know, that seven-foot wingspan in front of VA, G, uh, VA Jr. And he was just running on all cylinders. Uh, B, uh, BC would get themselves a defensive pass interference, and it'd be first down for the Bombers. Uh, the passing game is really starting to get going at this point. You know, that was something, again, like I said, going into halftime, I was, uh, I was a little worried about that. I thought that that was just going to be a big thing that we need to get going. I mean, like I said, our first drive was Brady Oliveira and only Brady Oliveira, only one throw to Brady Oliveira. And the incomplete pass on that drive uh, was nearly an interception on two occasions as that ball hit a, a few different places and BC nearly got it, but they didn't. So glad to see the, um, glad to see the throwing game gets going. Uh, Castillo would get, then go on a 34 yard field, uh, field goal attempt and he hits the uprights. This is kind of the one I'm talking about where Castillo probably wants this one back. Um, He's an excellent kicker. He had a little bit of an off night tonight. Uh, I was glad to see that he kind of started to uh, get that salvage later on. Glad he didn't miss any converts. Um, and so it's one of those things where I just kind of hope that whatever nerves he has, you know, he's able to settle those down and be ready when it comes to the Grey Cup. Uh, however, that's, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. And you know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping for Jackson Jeffcoat to get himself another sack because he got three sacks tonight. Jackson Jeffcoat, third sack of the game. The words of Gordon Ramsay shut it down. Oh, Let's go! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Phenomenal. This is one of the best games I've ever seen out of Jackson Jeffcoat. He was our pass rush was all over BC. They could not contain us to save their goddamn lives. And Jackson Jeffcoat was a huge part of that. Jake Thomas was a huge part of that. Uh, Willie Jefferson was on all cylinders, exactly what we need out of Blue Bomber football. BC would go down, though. They would hit themselves a 43-yard field goal, um, and it would be 18-13 to 13, uh, for the Bombers. So one thing I will say about BC, Sean White was flawless tonight for the Lions. He really was able to, to get some critical points on the board. Uh, for the Lions, and it was one of those things where if he had cracked up even the way that Castillo had, this game isn't as close um, as um, as it was. Um, but BC would then, uh, they would take an illegal contact penalty. They'd go back and forth a little bit. BC would then go offside. BC was very undisciplined when it comes to the penalties tonight. So that's one thing, I guess, if, if your Lions kind of look back on. I, I saw a lot of people ref blaming, but then again, you'll see that in pretty much every sports game. It is what it is. Um, Cramdy would then go and get himself a sack because, you know, everyone needs one. You need a sack. You need a sack. You need a sack. Cramdy gets one. <laughs> Excellent. Four, again, pass rush was all over them. Um, when we had a linebacker but, uh, backer blitz in there, um, they just couldn't contain it. Now, one thing, uh, this I this might have happened in the first half. I think, yeah, this happened in the first half. I forgot to mention it, and I forgot to write this down. Uh, but an important thing, uh, Adam Big Hill uh, gets injured, goes out of the game. He gets uh, carted off. Uh, he's not walking off on his own two feet, so really, really concerned for Adam Big Hill. Really hope that whatever it is is not serious and that everything was more precautionary because I would love to see him in the Grey Cup. I'd hate to be missing him for the Grey Cup. Uh, I hope all is well with Adam Big Hill. But without further ado, we will go into the fourth quarter of this game. Uh, BC uh, would go uh, on short yardage, trying to get that first down. They do just barely, only by about two inches, but first down's a first down. Uh, they would get it going, and man, they go they go for that long bomb. And, um, and this man emerges from his cocoon. Guess who's back? Demario Houston is back! He started the season in Houston. The one who picked everything off, he was back for this game. Gets the pick.
Phenomenal, phenomenal, fantastic play by Demario Houston to get that interception and just cause absolute havoc. I, I'm so glad that Demario Houston uh, got this because it was one of those things where he was firing on all cylinders at the start of this year, and then he kind of got a little bit invisible. But man, was he back for this game. This is exactly what we need. You know, playoff, blue bomber, hockey. Or football. God, not hockey. <laughs> Sorry. I'm 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 used to thinking that because whenever I'm watching the Jets. God damn it. Playoff, blue bomber, football. Holy shit. Um Carter, remember the sport. God damn it. <laughs> um good pass for Kenny Lawler. Uh, and then there would be another one then for Nick Dembski. So this again, what I'm really happy about in the sense of being able to diversify that throwing game. Being able to show that BC cannot cater their defense towards one or two receivers. They got to watch out because everyone is a threat. Uh, O'Leary Orange also had a really solid game when he was in. Uh, nice to see some of our backups coming in and being able to put up a uh, put up some damage, even when a guy like Dalton Schoen is out of the game. Uh, Castillo would then hit, uh, hit the field goal. Uh, from the three-yard line. This is one where I really was hoping for the touchdown. Didn't quite get it. It'd be 21-3 to uh, for the Bombers. And then Clements on the BC offense. We get his second sack of the night. One of the best games I've seen out of Malik Clements as well. Again, everyone involved with the passing rushing tonight was fantastic. And if if I'm given stars of the game, that is star star number one is anyone involved in the pass rush tonight. Fantastic. Vernon Adams Jr., a guy who's normally so good running, could not escape that pocket. It, and he, it, it, it showed and they just weren't able to do anything. Um, there would be an incomplete pass, but we would challenge for pass interference and Coach O'Shea, he knows when to challenge. Coach O'Shea knows right. The challenge goes our way. After review by the command center, we have pass interference. Yeah! Excellent play call by Coach O'Shea. Uh, there was a few times I was actually a little bit annoyed with Buck Pierce for this play calling because it was a little predictable at times. However, Coach O'Shea was great, and Buck Pierce, you know, at the end of the day, he got the job done. That is the way it is. Uh, we would then go down. Castile would hit the 35-yard field goal, make this 24-13 to 13 for the Blue Bombers. And this is kind of what I mean about how Castillo kind of eventually gets his act together. Again, harder kick than what he had before that he missed. They hit the upright, but he gets this one. He gets kind of zoned in back into it. Good to see that uh, from Sergio Castillo. Um, BC would go for it on third, and, uh, third down. I can't remember exactly how many yards they needed, but it's not enough. Turnover on downs. I know you guys love all the reactions, so we got an absolute ton tonight. Uh, this is going to be a nightmare for me to edit, but that's fine. It was it was all worth it because we are Grey Cup bound, baby, for the fourth year straight. Um, but there's a little bit more left in this game. We will kill the clock a bit, and then Sheehan has a really, really good punt. Really, really pleased with it. Uh, Sheehan had the best best night of his career to, uh, tonight. Uh, all of his punts were very good. Um, not even necessarily in the sense of that... He was always getting extremely deep. The thing is, is that the returner for the BC Lions, Lucky Whitehead, very, very, very good returner. And so he was very, very strategic about his kicks, being able to put them near the sidelines so that way um, it either hits uh, hits the ground and goes out so they got no time to do it, or it's so close to the sidelines where that returner kind of hesitates, where he's like, okay, am I going to wait for this to bounce out of play? Am I going to try to catch it and then run with it? That split second of decision-making can make all the difference when it comes to running downfield, being able to get in front of that ball and being able to, uh, to, to do some damage. And we were, we did excellent at that. I was pleased. Um, uh, we would take a roughing the passer penalty. Uh, I'm not sure how I felt about it is what it is. Uh, BC was pushing downfield and then Cole would get himself a sack. <laughs> Cole gets a sack, 
ball goes downfield. Uh, there's a few people uh, kind of arguing about um, about what happens here with Parker and Dominic Rhymes. Uh, a lot of people online seem to be really, really pissed uh, talking about um, uh, about Parker here and that he should have been uh, penalized for pass interference. Um, I can't, So I want to make sure it's clear. I was in the stadium. I was not watching this on TV. From what I saw, it really looked like Dominic Rhymes literally grabbed Parker with both hands and threw him to the ground. From where I was. Again, I'm not going to say that is what happened. I'm saying from where, what I saw, from the angle I saw it at. So it's one of those things, um, you know, maybe if I saw a replay, you know, maybe if I saw the TSN angle, it changed my mind. I'm just saying from what I saw, that is the way it appeared. So uh, if it appeared differently to you, feel free to comment down below. And also how you're watching the game. So then maybe I could check it out to, you know, see if I agree. Uh, I think I think I, I will check that out later, just out of curiosity. But I'm not going to make an ignorant statement like by saying like, oh, I was there. It absolutely, I'm, I'm not going to be like that. Um, it is what it is. But home would get an interception off the play. Home with the interception. And funny enough, uh, if you watch CFL Central, absolutely should. Uh, link to CFL uh, Central uh, channel down below. Uh, we did our uh, preview of this game. And so Rick was like, all right, we're uh, Bombers are probably getting an interception. So who are you picking? He picked Demario Houston. I picked Evan Holm. And we actually were both right as they got two interceptions. And it was the two that we picked. So, you know, Rick, fucking A. Um, but it is what it is. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers would win, would defeat the BC Lions and our Grey Cup bound. So final score. 24 to 13 for your Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Off to the Grey Cup to face the Montreal Alouettes. Not what I was expecting to come out of the East. However, at the end of the day, I think whether it's Toronto, I think whether it's uh, Montreal, I don't think it matters. I think at the end of the day, as, as that famous saying goes, job's not finished. It's not. Job is not finished. It is time to reclaim our throne. I said a year ago in, our, in my review of the Bombers losing to the Toronto Argonauts in the Grey Cup, I said the dynasty has not died. It has delayed. It has. You can go back in that video and listen to me say that. And I stand by every goddamn word. I do. And you know what? The, they, the Bombers can do it. The 110th Grey Cup. The Bombers become the first team to go, to go to the Grey Cup final for four consecutive years since the Edmonton Eskimos dynasty from 1978 to 1982. The first time in over 40 years. The first time for me, in many of you's lifetime. And the Bombers, the Bombers are a dynasty. And it's time to show them the 110th Grey Cup Sunday, November 19th. I cannot wait. I cannot wait, uh, especially since uh, my buddy Rick, he's going to be at the game. Uh, I believe he's going to be trying to get some live footage for uh, for the channel, whether that's CFL Central, whether that's here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good stuff. We're going to be uh, reviewing and previewing uh, together uh, both uh, both um, games from um, from the finals, uh, the East and the West final on CFL Central. Make sure you guys check that out so you guys can check that stuff out. We're, we got a lot of good stuff coming out of, uh, out of CFL Central in this regard as well as our preview. It's probably going to be about 30 minutes for the 110th Grey Cup on CFL Central. Make sure you guys check that out. Without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Also, check out Jets game today. The loss to the Stars is what it is, but Jack, uh, Zach's making some good effort on that. So make sure you guys do check that out. 
Um, and yeah, without further ado, see you guys in the Grey Cup.